company was founded in 2005 by Brian Whitman and Tristan Shahan when they were getting their PhDs at the MIT Media Lab. Uh, Brian's background is in cultural understanding around music and Tristan's is in machine listening. Um, they were both trying to solve the same problem, which is a computer platform that understands all of the music in the world, um, but they go at it at very different approaches. Brian's approach, again, understanding what everyone on the internet is saying and doing around music, and Tristan's approach is more at the kind of the signal level, understanding every song out there. And the company is really based on the concept of combining both that cultural understanding and that acoustic understanding in a single platform to understand music more like the way people do, um, which is both culturally what your friends are listening to, um, your values around music, um, the descriptive terms, that's really important stuff, um, but also the acoustic signal itself, I mean, how you and I hear music. So uh, the Echo Nest is really about combining those two in a single platform, um, again, to have that depth of understanding that um, beforehand, other approaches to that same massive problem, there was a pretty clear trade-off. You could have an automated system, but it really wouldn't understand the music itself very well. It would, like, Amazon's people who did this also did that. They can analyze transactional data, but they don't understand the music itself. Um, or you could have manual approaches, which are people who are actually listening to music and writing about it. You get great data that way, but it just doesn't scale. So. All Music Guide, for example, they have editors who write articles about about an artist or about an album, and um, you know they're experts and they do a decent job doing that. Um, but again, they just can't keep up with the 50,000 new releases that are taking place every year. Um, so again, the company is about combining those two approaches uh, to uh, have that depth of understanding that say that All Music Guide expert does, but to scale it so we can keep up with all the new music coming out on the web all the time. The Echonest is trying to solve a a problem that's growing every day, and that is, as music is increasingly becoming something that we consume online, all of these music services out there, from a blogger to MySpace or, or even an iTunes, they all have the same job, and that is to connect with you and to become your trusted music expert. Um, but they have to do that with a catalog of four, five, seven million songs. Um, what the Equinus does is gives each of these music services um, the expertise on all of that music out there. So they can provide you with a more personalized uh, music offering by learning what you like and recommending stuff that's uh, tailored to you, and a much more educational or informative experience by telling you a lot more about those artists. Um, and finally, um, a more interactive experience letting you actually engage with the music and interact with it, mash it up, do cool things with it, um, all automatically. So basically our job is to help all of these services offer every user a much more compelling online music experience. And um, anyone in that space, again from that blogger to uh, a big music service like iTunes, they all have that same problem. Um, and broadly speaking that problem is just keeping up with all the new music that's out there all the time. Uh, again, our job is, is helping all these services understand all the content they have, both the music itself and even the editorial content that they've written about, say, a Rolling Stone, not a customer of ours, but a good example. Um, they have 20 years of archives. How do they understand everything that they have there to deliver it to every individual on a personalized basis? Um, and we combine two approaches to do that. First. Uh, uh, cultural understanding around music. We crawl the web and uh, do language processing and index and analyze on a weekly basis millions of web pages about music to understand how the entire online world understands every album, artist, and track. So what is every blog post, reviewer, piece of news out there, how are they describing the white stripes right now? We're analyzing that all the time and doing language processing to understand how the white stripes is being described on the web. That's half of this platform, the musical brain, how we understand music. The other half is machine listening, so that we have software that can analyze an MP3 in about five seconds and extract from it the pitch, the tempo, the time signature, song structure, basically the types of things that a musician would use to describe a song. And we combine all that stuff in the musical brain to have this cultural understanding about music and this real content level understanding. And then from there, we make that platform available for any music web service to tap into, 
to power better music search. So you can type in um, garage rock revival and pull up the white stripes. We understand what that term means from a music standpoint. Um, or recommendation. So we have a recommendation platform where any music service can uh, personalize all their content based on your particular you know, interests. Um, and then some cool remix and mashup tools that rely more on our audio stuff. Um, if we can tell a piece of software where the, all the downbeats are on a track and where the guitar solo starts, you can power some really interesting music visualizers and much more musical applications, applications that actually understand the underlying content itself. Um, so that's, you know, that's basically how we're going at the problem. I break down our solutions into three big areas. Music search, music recommendation, and these interactive music applications. And there are definitely uh, you know, a, a bunch of companies trying to solve this huge problem in each of those areas. There isn't one company that we run into in all of those areas, but certainly um, you know, in each category there are. On the search side, um, a lot of the traditional enterprise search players like Fast or Decca or those types of guys who go in um, not just to music companies but anyone with a ton of content and try to offer a more integrated uh, search and navigation solution. Um, we're a bit different there because we're totally focused on music. We, if you also sell DVDs or um, offer content outside of music, we're not the guys to help you there. We're going to be, we, we are aspiring to be the, the best platform around understanding music and solving those music problems. Tons of uh, activity in the recommendation space. I'd say that's probably the most active area. Um, so there are the kind of general recommendation platforms out there like Choice Stream, uh, which is a company based up here, um, Aggregate Knowledge, Lumia. Uh, these are collaborative filtering systems that users who did this also did that. Not dedicated to music, but we run into them sometimes with some music companies. Uh, music IP is an audio analysis oriented playlist generator. So Music IP does kind of half of what we do. They do the audio analysis side, and then from there find um, audio signals that are similar. Um, so we run into them some kind sometimes on the on the recommendation side as well. Um, those are you know a couple of them. There there are definitely more on the recommendation side and more popping up every day because. Fortunately for us, in the last couple of months, I'd say probably the last five months, recommendation in the music space has moved from a, a nice-to-have to a must-have. So um, before, earlier on, there were a couple of companies that did a really good job building their own platforms, Amazon, um, Last.fm, uh, Pandora. Um, but these were proprietary systems that other companies couldn't replicate. I mean. Amazon's got an army of PhDs that built um, their collaborative filtering system. Last.fm mobilized a user base of 20 million plus to build their system. And Pandora actually hired musicians to write about music over the last eight years. So, you know, if you're another company trying to get into that world, those are probably not your options. And I think uh, the need for other companies to offer those types of experiences has really become a, I mean, users just expect it. Um, which has created a lot of demand, and as a result, it's created a lot of uh, a lot of interest uh, for companies going and trying to solve that problem.